So the first thing I'm going to do is start by blocking in the, um, the sky area up the top. For that I'm going to use, and obviously I'm using acrylics here today. I've got a fairly large brush. I'm just going to use a flat brush and I'm going to be blocking in my, um, my blues, leaving some white areas for the clouds. I'm going to blocking all of this side down here. I'm going to be turning into more of a cerulean blue as I come down in the sky. It's going to be more cobalt, French ultramarine, possibly a little bit of phthalo at the top. Coming down to cerulean blue down the bottom. And then I'll be going into the greens and so on in the grasses. And then we'll start with the figures. So that's the intention. I'm just cleaning out my brush and I'm going to go straight into some cobalt blue. And I'm going to put this on reasonably thickly, not, not massively thickly, but so that it at least gives me some good coverage. And obviously if you're doing this in watercolour, you'll need to uh, do this as a, as a wash, obviously. Um, and you'd wash it from, from blue down to lighter blue and then into your um, into your greens. Okay, so I'm trying to keep nice random brush marks, purposely uh, trying to leave some of these little holes, little air holes in the sky so that they can be filled later on with the with the clouds. So a little bit more blue up here. Just wiggling and almost intentionally trying to keep the brush um, moving fairly rapidly but also in different directions giving these little marks so coming down to about halfway now I'm going to be starting to go into some cerulean blue and a little bit of white so that I can graduate the sky and get it to start to get lighter as it comes down the painting. So coming down into the back of the my figure. And obviously Monet, the way that Monet painted, he was very much, uh, he wasn't really about keeping it all very, very neat and um, it wasn't a precise method of painting. He's a bit more um, broken colour and um, the interplay of one colour next to another colour and how that kind of affects. So you want to really try and make your, obviously if you're doing this in acrylics and orange, you can't really do it with watercolour, but you want to try and make it so that your colours don't get too, um, too clean looking. So I've just dipped into a little bit of yellow into that, to go into that blue and some more white obviously. I'm going to clean my brush off a little bit, it's getting too much blue in it. Teeny bit more yellow in, this, in the cerulean blue colours. Just to start to get a, an aquary or more of a greeny, slightly greeny blue to the lower part of the sky. So that it, it, it has a slightly greener quality to the blue, or a cooler quality, I should say. So coming into my little figure, and obviously I'm not gonna cut too neatly around the figure, just get some blues, get some blues in and around where they're gonna be coming in, because all of this will get painted into and over and um, works on as we progress the painting. So just taking those blues right the way down, touch more white, a little bit more yellow. So right down at the bottom of the sky down here, I want it a, quite a bit more um, yellow in it. So there we go, nice and light down the bottom. And there's, a nice, there's actually quite a grey, grey green patch on this right hand side, which I think is another cloud. So I'll leave that white for the moment. Perhaps a teensy bit of this lighter blue over there. Okay, and that's my first part of the sky in. 
So I'm gonna move now on to the greens. We'll start to put some greens in down this large, large area down the bottom. So for that, I'm going to use some like sap green, or if you don't have a green specifically, then you can use the cobalt blue or the ultramarine with some yellow in it, or you can use some phthalo blue with a bit of yellow in it. If it goes too green or acidic, just pop a little bit of red in there just to knock it down. Okay. So this is just to get some initial color. This isn't the final color. It's just to get some color onto this lower area of grass. So there we go. So we'll just get some of these scriggly, scraggly marks on here. Um, because I've done my landscape, I don't really have any information past the figure at this point. So I'm actually going to start to curve my hill line out on the edges. And I appreciate most of you can't do this because you're you've done it portrait but um, just to finish off the picture that's what I'm going to do so there we go so a little bit of hill line there some of these greens coming in on this side scrubbing the brush there we go kind of pop put a little bit of burnt sienna now into that green to brown it up a touch so just the, the orangey brown. And again, this is just so that I'm starting to kill the majority of this white. It's not really the final color. It's really just an under, under color. So a little bit more burnt sienna. Just down this right hand corner. And the shadow off the figure, the main figure is actually quite got quite a lot of blue in it. So I'm going to dip into some phthalo blue into that same, into the same browny bluey mix. So browny greeny mix. And I'm just bringing that as my start of the shadow. It might be a little bit too dark, but it's just to get the, again, as I said, to get the white covered up and to get the, um, the start of the shadowy feel. So some of that on there. Clean my brush off again. First things first, I will block in uh, some of the greys in these clouds so that I've got a, um, a value there. And they're actually lighter than the sky. So I need to mix up. Well, actually, they're probably about the same tone as the sky, to be fair. So I'm going to mix up a very light Payne's grey with some white and try and get it roughly to the same value, same tone as the blue that I put on here. So there we go. And it's actually possibly got a bit of a bit of yellowiness to it as well. So I'm going to put a bit of yellow in that, just a tiny bit and work this in. Uh, kind of comes down in behind the in behind the um, grass line. Take some of that up up here to where those blue bits are. And then I need a bit of that on this left hand side. Oops, my board's wobbling something chronic. Let's just get that hair out. I need to mix a bit more of that up. So a bit more paint grey, some more white, and a tiny bit of yellow. Kind of a pinprick of yellow really in that. It's very, very minimal because if I put too much yellow in there, it's going to go too green, which I don't want to do. I just want I just want a slight warmth to the grey, that's all I'm looking for. And again, this might get um, worked into with other colours later, but for the moment it's fine. A little bit more coming up towards the main body of clouds, which are going to be in this area. So I need to put 
a few more marks here just to cover up my drawing. Still see the pastel through the uh, through the board. So I'll take it to about there, and that's probably enough for the moment. There's a couple of bits of grey up here in the sky, so I'll just put some of those in. Again, trying to leave them as as brush marks rather than blend them or try and work them in too strongly. A bit more Payne's grey. And also as well, I don't know if you can see, but I'm trying to use all elements of the brush. So not only am I doing it flat, but sometimes I do it on the side of the brush, sometimes I'll do it flat like this to give me the variation of brush marks. So rather than just use the tip of the brush, I'm purposely trying to um, get some variation into the, the work. <clears throat> there we go, so some greys in there. Clean my brush off. Then I'm going to start to put some colour on the main figures now. Now there, if we compare those now to the grey I've just put in the in the cloud, so I kind of compare this area to that, this is much bluer, sort of bluey, maybe slash purpley. So for that, I'm going to put a paint gray again with some white. And with that, I'm going to use some um, cobalt blue to blue it up. And into that, I'm going to put a little bit of Elysian crimson, which is the darker red. Which is the um, not the light red, not like cadmium red, the darker red. Much more white. So it's sort of a purpley grey blue colour is what I'm looking for. Sorry, just go over those colours again, please. Yep. So I've used some Payne's grey. I've used um, some cobalt blue some white and some Elysian crimson, which is a dark red. So let's just start to, and under there needs to go a lot browner, so I'm not gonna worry too much about finessing this. I'm just gonna put some color on to get the body of the dress blocked in. And this may look way too dark at the moment, which it probably is, but as I usually say, we're just blocking in at this stage. We're not really worrying about <clears throat> um, detail or even the um, making it look like it should look. It's really a case of comparison. So we just need to get something on there so we can compare against. So I'm going to take some more of the cerulean blue into that same grey mix. So the cerulean blue will have the will. Um, not change the tone of the colour too much, it will just blue it up. Oops, got the hairs everywhere here. So the cerulean blue is just going to keep the tone about the same grey. So can you see if I put that on there, it's the same grey, but it's now more blue. Okay, so coming down into this little figure and bringing it right down into the grasses because obviously we're going to paint over a lot of this <clears throat> and it comes right up into his little collar got a shoulder there his hat's a different color so we'll leave that for the moment in his face because that's a lot warmer i'm going to bring some of this same color into the body of the dress so even though we're just blocking in at this stage still try and concentrate on making sure your shapes and your drawing doesn't run away from you okay try and make sure your drawing is good with the brush so all the it still needs to look like a dress even though it might not be the right color the tone might might be too dark but it still needs to look like a dress if that makes sense so i'm putting a bit more white now so as we come up the up higher it needs to go a bit more greeny so I'm putting some more yellow into those greys. It's possibly a little bit too light, but we'll go with that for the moment. 
you know, work those together in a bit. So under the arm, into the bodice, very light here. Comes up the arm there. Then we go more blue again, so more cerulean. I'm using cerulean blue because it, it's a very low tinting blue. By tinting, I mean it doesn't change the colour very quickly. So you can put a lot of it in the colour without affecting the, the tone too drastically. Okay, so these two tones, that's a bit more yellowy, this is a bit more bluey, but they're about the same tone. <clears throat> and that's the key, because we're trying to create the illusion of us, the viewer, looking up at this figure against this light cloud. So she has to be quite silhouetted. And if she's not, and you start to see too much variation in these colours, you'll break the illusion. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this same greeny greys, just indicate some of those folds. I'm not going to fiddle too much with that. Okay, and then we've got some of that. She's got this sort of netting, I don't know what it is, hat thing going on. So I'm going to bring some of those greens into the head, <clears throat> which then leads us into the parasol. So the parasol is actually a lot darker and it's more akin to the greens we've got down here. So I'm just dipping back into my similar greens that I use down in the grasses and I'm going to start to scrub some of those on into the uh, parasol. Now with the parasol, because it's actually a, a domed object that's going in like this, I want to make my brush marks um, try to suggest the direction that the the material that's being stretched over the wire frame is going. So, for example, here this is very vertical, so you can see I'm coming down the painting. When I'm doing this panel, I need to go at an angle, so I'll be going more at an angle like this. And when I'm doing these ones in here are be going a lot more horizontal because we can't really see the ones you know the panel that's right up the top here so let's just take this a little bit higher and obviously on this side it needs to go the other way around so this panel will be coming out so i need a bit more of that green and i'm going to just make sure that the drawing stays um fairly accurate so i'm just gonna try and shape up that area there with a line um, come a little bit darker and then maybe make this panel a bit darker coming in there And then we're actually a little bit lighter on the right hand side. So I'm going to put a bit more white and a tiny bit more yellow into the mix to bring the, uh, the value down. And then come in here, which then goes behind the head in there. And then back to my darker greens so that I can show that edge, this edge, and this edge, okay, a little bit stronger. Like so. And then the top of the parasol is very, very light. So how do we do that? Well, what I'm gonna to need to do is bring the blues up here a lot darker. So when I did my sky, I didn't bring it close enough to the parasol. So I'm just gonna put a bit more blue my darker blues. So the same blues that I used in the original sky, which was the cobalt blue um, at the top here. And I'm just going to shape up the top of the parasol like so. Bring it around and then away 
and then leave that a bit more cloudy there. Cut in here a bit more, like so. Because this side of the actual um, painting should be darker in order to give the illusion that we've got. So the blues need to come down to her head closer. I'm just going to bring that lower into the head and then away. Okay, so I won't play with that too much. Right, the next or the last element really to go in is now the warmer darks or the warmer um, areas within the figure. So like the face here and here and the underside of the dress. So I'm going to use more brownie greys, sorry, more brownie for colours. I'm going to take some burnt sienna and I'm going to put that just into my grey mix. So starting from a grey position is not a bad thing to do when you're trying to figure out what colour to use. Just make a grey and then put some colour in it. So it's kind of a brownie, a brownie grey colour that I've got here. And I'm going to try this to see how dark it is. That might be okay, it might be a little bit too dark, but I can probably use some of that up in the hairline. Some in the hand. Now the hand, I'm not really going to make it a hand, I'm just going to make it a shape. So coming down, just give the suggestion there's some fingers pointing up there. Um, and then maybe there's a wrist in here somewhere. And then we've got a very red, so I'm going into the alizarin colour again, the red, the alizarin red. Because this little boy's face is very, very warm. So I'm going to block it in as a shape, first of all. So the chin comes down into the collar line. And it goes all the way up into his hat, all the way through. And I might even just take the same colour, just a bit more brown in it, out to the. Actually, I'm going to get a pointier brush because that one's too big. It's going to go to a round brush now, just so I've got a bit of a point on my brush. That I can carve. The back of the hat here and the back of the hat there, which then comes up towards the rim, which will come across the forehead. <clears throat> and then I'm going to do a little bit more, I'm going to put a tiny bit more blue into those brownie colours in order to knock some of the warmth out of the out of the paint so that I can get this face in or we'll start to block this face in. And because of the angle of my light I can't really see the glare is quite a lot. So I'm going to come with my other hand. I'm just putting it in almost as a shape. There's an ear up here somewhere. And then over the top of this, I need to bring, I need to bring a brown that colour. I'm going to put some green into the brown for the burnt sienna and a tiny bit of Payne's grey to darken it. Just see what that's like for tone. And bring this around the top of the forehead. And it comes out there, cross, just block that in, down and curls up, and then kind of comes down the back a bit, something like that. And then she's got this darkish blue neckerchief thing. So we'll just get some of that in, just so that it looks like she's twisted to the side rather than 
being face on and killing all those whites really just to get rid of the whites and then the last bit then before we have a quick check on how you're doing is put the browns in down here suggesting some of those ruffles in the in the dress touch more yellow lose all of these whiter spots down the bottom of her dress down here and i've just noticed i've still got a big pile of white there so i'm going to get rid of that with some a piece of sky color so the light sky color which was the um the cerulean blue the white and a tiny bit of yellow. Let's just put that in here just to fill this area up. And bring a bit of that around this figure. Not too much water in that. More paint. yellow okay just fill up some of these little white holes that i've got around the place okay there we go so oh in fact just before i finish that bit this section i'm just going to put his little hat in which will be a um a warm straw type colour. So I'm putting some yellow into the pinky browns that I just used in the um in the skin tones. And I'm just going to bring that now to create the shape of his hat. Bring that across there like so. And I'll also use a teeny bit of that in her hands and maybe a tiny bit up here in the face chin okay we're going to uh, put the little umbrella um, pole thing in <laughs> for one of a better word I'm going to start to work a little bit on the cloud which then I can use to um, shape up the face a touch um, and we're going to put some more work into the grasses to get more color in there because uh, there's a lot more color that needs to go in the grasses than we've got at the moment for the cloud section up here because i've left this all white i'm going to use some very pale um, uh, pieces of color just to work in and around the umbrella um, to shape it all up so I'm starting off with from white because it is going to be a very light, um, very light color. And into that, I'm just going to start off with, I don't know, let's just go with a tiny pinprick of um, Payne's Grey. So it's still very white, but it's just got a tiny bit of Payne's Grey in it. And I'm going to then start to work that into my cloud area. Uh, I need a hold the brush sideways more start to get some of these marks up into my clouds a bit more Payne's grey i feel a bit darker and a bit more cerulean blue just get some of these marks in here show up the edge of that umbrella a little bit Up the brush a touch leave leaving some little white holes showing through so it kind of comes round and down still the same color still pretty gray I'm going to go into 
some a tiny bit of burnt sienna now into that same grey mix, which will have the effect of warming up the the brown, uh, sorry, the greys just a little bit. Coming down, and it comes kind of down to his head hat. And I'm not really trying to make it exactly like the Monet, I'm just um, just following the basic principle of what he's, what he's done. Um, obviously, if I was doing this for a learning exercise, it would be a good idea to, to try and make it a bit more accurate. <clears throat> But for today it's fine so a little bit more yellow into that gray just warm up the colors down here a bit more a bit more yellowy colors over here touch down there so it's a good idea when you're putting oops when you're introducing a new color to pop it elsewhere within the painting. So I have some of that over here. A couple of little spots up in the clouds up there. I'm going to clean my brush now. So the next thing will be to start to work up this area here. So then we need some blue. I'm using the cobalt blue again with some white. The cobalt blue and white. And that's going to come in around the, the front of her face. And then that shape kind of comes either side of the the parasol stem or whatever you want to call it <clears throat> a bit bluer i feel a bit more blue in here i'm taking that right up into the top area up there and then i'm going to go slightly darker again it's a bit of paint gray in that Just to darken this up even more. Bringing the, whatever she's wearing, a headdress thing, and the sky tone very close together. So in actual fact, her headdress is a little bit darker than the sky. So I'm just darkening that up a bit more. It kind of comes down and away. Bringing the blues again. Blue to shape up the edge of her face here a bit more. Needs a bit more shape to it. Coming down the front of the, going a bit lighter down the front of the um, cloud towards her hand and then we're into our light colors again which is the greys so back into these gray colors so that we get the contrast between the darker the darker piece of her neck scarf against a very very bright um white piece of cloud behind it and what that's effectively doing is making a very high level of contrast and pulling the eye up towards her face so we'll just get that in lose a little bit of the back of the hand much more white 
just to shake the hand up a bit. It's got a bit large there. Take some of that out the back of the of here. This needs to be a bit bluer actually. Make that a bit bluer there. Coming around the back of the um, bodice dress. Cut in a bit there. Make her a bit thinner. And then it comes down the back. And more white again. And into the white I'm putting a little bit of yellow, just a pinprick of yellow, not much, just a tiny little bit of yellow to give a little bit of variation in these lighter colours coming down the back of the dress. It kind of comes down here, indicating that the light is coming quite strongly there. So now then, I'm going to get into the, leave that alone for a minute, and put more colour into the grass. So I'm going into some of the sap green and some yellow. And I'm going to put a bit of white in that as well to give it a bit more opaque, opaqueness. And I'm going to start to bring this colour stronger up and break up this area. Just some little pieces of this. More green. And really with this kind of um, painting it's quite a good idea not to mix the paint too much so you get variation on your brush. Whereas normally we would make sure we know what one tone we're putting down. It's quite a good idea with this to have some have some variation on the brush. I have a little bit of um, phthalo green now, which is a more vivid green, much more um, acidic green. Start to bring that into my shadow area. Uh, coming down through, some more yellow, some more yellow into this area. There's even purples and blues and reds and all sorts going on in this grass. So I'm going to try and get some of those colours to work together. Just to block some of these in first. A little bit more, um, I'm going to swap the brush actually, I'm going to go for a rounder brush now. More yellow again, a bit more white, tiny bit of red in that. Not mixed too clearly, I'm just leaving it a bit broken. And making kind of verticalish marks stabby marks but it's broken colour. A bit more green into that same colour. Uh, lots of variation. More green again. A bit burnt sienna. And some darker marks down here. Much more burnt sienna, a bit of more red. The burnt sienna and red together. I should have a little bit more red in that mix. Coming down. More red over here. Now in my shadow, through this area, it's actually quite warm. So I'm going to bring that same red into this shadowy area. Uh, 
and also as well I'm going to put some more um, phthalo green in that so it's the same red but with more phthalo green so it goes more browny bring some of that together work those colors in wipe the brush off a bit to lighten that I'm just going to use some sap green and a bit of yellow so rather than use white I'm using yellow to lighten that color and a bit of sap green so very very short stabby marks these bits of paint down here Work some of that back out into the grasses. A bit more down there. <clears throat> Bring some out on the left here. More blue. Clean my brush off. Phthalo blue, bit of white. Put a bit of green in it. Put some lighter marks in here. 